from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. on Praise the Lord from the vacation capital of the world, exciting Central Florida, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. and welcome to TBN in Orlando. We're so excited for you joining us today and being a part of your homes. We have an exciting show in store for you and uh, just stick around and you're gonna be blessed tremendously by our guest today. But before I introduce him, I wanna share a word with you in Matthew chapter four, beginning with verse number 18. It says, and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. They then said to him, them, follow me, and I will make you fishermen, fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets. He called to them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. I believe that this is a season where God is calling for his disciples to follow him immediately. Today we have an awesome man of God who is going to come and share with you the principles of great discipleship and leadership. Apostle Lejeune uh, Cole will be with us today. And right now we're going to have some great worship and we'll be right back right after this. I have found a place, holy place near my father's heart. Yes, it is a place of restoration. Yes, it is in the secret place of God. And I have found. can call its home yeah it's living in the river the holy river that's flowing from the throne whoa, whoa. times of refreshing times of refreshing shine Yes, I did, 
but mercy met me there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know why. I don't know why. Why he loves us so. And he wouldn't let me go. Thank you, Lord. He brings times of refreshing. Times of right refreshing. Now. Showers of blessing. Showers, Showers of blessing. blessing. Times of refreshing. Times of right refreshing. here in the presence of like his presence times of refreshing times of he brings blessings. showers of blessing showers, showers of blessing times of refreshing times of right here blessing. in the presence of the Lord you see right now Right now, hey, threshold's coming down, new wine in my cup, overflowing. Hey, there's a well springing up while the rain's coming down and it's pouring. Hey, threshold, a new wine, overflowing. Thank you, Lord. And the Holy Ghost power is lifting me up till I'm so. Times of refreshing, times of refreshing, showers of blessing, showers of blessing, times of refreshing, times of right here in the presence of the Lord. He brings you times of refreshing. Thank you, Lord. Times Thank you, Lord. Blessings. Hallelujah. Showers of blessing. He'll bring rivers to your desert right now. Hallelujah. Times of refreshing. Even now, anointing. Even now, anointing is falling the In the presence of the Lord. presence of the Lord. Well, welcome back. Isn't it wonderful to have such an awesome praise and worship where I'm here today with my good friend from Tampa, Florida, senior pastor of the Perfected Love Church, along with his wonderful wife, Valora, is Apostle Lejeune Cole. Welcome him to Praise the Lord. How you doing, man? You. Doing good, doing good. good, great, to, good. great to be here. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for taking your time out to uh, be with us today. You know, you have a great heart for leadership and also discipleship. And we want to talk about uh, those two things today because I believe that this is a great season for people uh, to understand that God really wants us to rise up as disciples and leaders. And so tell us a little bit about that, uh, the discipleship. Well, you know, I, I really believe discipleship is a process. You know, people come into the body and they're converted from whatever they're converted from, and so they're a convert. But then somewhere along the, the way, they should, be, they should be discipled. So convert, now disciple, and then as a process, they, they begin to learn more about God. They begin, you know, begin to learn more about their, their gifts, and then all of a sudden, they start working in the kingdom. And then eventually they become a leader. So I think it's necessary for us to walk through those four phases and even help people to understand where they are. Right. Because if we don't help them to really guide, to guide them and walk them through that process at whatever stage they're at, then what happens is they could, they could spend time and they could spend energy and they could spend resources that they could really be applying to do the kingdom work that 
they, they just, they're just lost and they're in limbo, you know. So maybe they stay too long as just a convert without somebody really taking them by the hand, teaching them to read the Bible, teaching them to understand what God is really saying through his word. Because if we cannot understand what God is saying in his word, it's going to be difficult for us to defeat the, the, the forces that are, that are coming against us every day. Every day when we wake up, there is some challenge, some storm, some trial that we're going to go through, some type of adversity. And so if we're not taught how to be, how to be strong New Testament believers who are able to combat anything that we come against, then what's going to happen is that we won't be as victorious as we could have been. And so even, even as you were reading the scripture uh, when, we, when we first started, right. uh, you were talking about how Jesus took uh, those two young men and took them from being fishers and taught them over a period of three, three and a half years, taught them how, and then all of a sudden on the day of Pentecost, here is Peter standing up, giving the first address. And this is the same person who had denied Jesus. This is the same person who cut the man's ear off. This is the same man who many years before had just been a, a, a you know, a, a meager fisherman. Right. But now he is giving one of the first public addresses of Christianity. So I think that it is major and it's vastly important for us as leaders to be able to help people to transition through those stages of discipleship. You know, with, with so much that's going on in the world today, how is how important is it that the church really focus in this hour on training uh, people to be true disciples of Christ? Well, for instance, one of the things that, that we, we have a discipleship institute, and there we teach them to memorize scripture. Right. so that it's not their second nature, it's their first nature. Good, that's Because great. unless scripture is our first nature, it's just like you're driving down the street in your car. Well, if it's second nature for you to stop, you could be in trouble if, you, if a car pulls out in front of you. But if it's your first nature is to slam on the brakes, then it helps you when you get into that situation. Well, likewise, there are going to be situations in life that we're going to deal with that we need the scripture and the application of it to be our first nature. So someone says something or does something you don't like. How do we handle that? We handle that according to the Word of God, and that's our first reaction and not our second reaction. Because sometimes when our second reaction is not the Word of God, it leads us into situations that we probably got to figure out. Then we got to pray to get ourselves out of these situations when if we had applied God's Word concerning it in the first, we wouldn't have the situation at hand. So I think that with everything that we've got going on, believers have to be taught how to pray. Uh, believers have to be taught how to understand and apply their Word. Believers have to be taught how to really discover their purpose and really begin to walk fully in the purpose and the destiny for which God created them. That's good. Now, you have uh, something that is called spiritual gladiator. And I kind of like that term because it, 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 it kind of makes me feel like th that you're talking about being a warrior in the spirit. Yes. So talk about the spiritual gladiator that you, uh, that you have going on. You know, I, I get so excited when you, when you ask me that question. Uh, somebody asked me one day, okay, spiritual gladiator, but gladiators were in the Roman Colosseum and they made sport of them. Very interesting. The, the, this, this word gladiator is actually a combination of two words. One is gladius and the other one is ator. Gladius just meant sword. And so ator was a human agent. So a gladiator is a human agent who yields a sword. So what, what this means is that each one of us is supposed to be able to take our word and be able to operate in it with power and accuracy in the earth. And so this is what we do to make spiritual gladiators, people who are able to stand through the storms and the trials of life and be able to do that victoriously. That's what uh, being a spiritual gladiator is all about. Um, and, and so we've got a couple of different instances uh, depending on on what we're doing and where we're doing it at and, you know, potentially even what the pastor wants when we go uh, to do it. But uh, sometimes we're doing, we're dealing with prayer. And um, sometimes we're teaching the believer how to pray effectively. How do you pray God's word? Because it's going to be God's word that he's going to react to and that, the, that, that won't return void and that the angels are hearkening to the voice of God's word. And so these are the things that we've got to understand is how to have power in prayer. But then I also think that it's very important for people to be able to learn how to hear the voice of God. Right. In today's society, we have got to be able to hear the voice of God. You need the voice of God to be able to tell you how to go uh, from point A to point B just on a regular basis. What happens when your GPS goes out mm -hmm. and you're trying to get somewhere? Because most of us are, are taught to rely on our GPS. If, or God if, forbid, the Internet. Oh, my God. If that happens, it's <laughs> that over. That would be a crisis. Every, everything's done. Uh, you know, we were, in the, um, we were in the airport last night. Yeah. So uh, because the flight was delayed, mm -hmm. they, um, they changed, I guess, the system went down 
down. And so I was relying on my phone. So I look at my phone because there's where my ticket is. I look at my phone and all of a sudden I can't get my position. Now I was flying Southwest. And so it was necessary for me to understand my positioning so that because the guy behind me is like, what's your number? What's your number? And so as I'm sitting there, I run over to the counter and she gives me a paper ticket. But if I had not had the Holy Spirit to lead me to go there, then what would have happened was I would have not been able to get on my flight. And so we need Holy Spirit in every part of our lives to be able to speak to us. And we got to learn how to be able to hear his voice so that we know when to do what. The last part of that is being able to discern the spiritual forces that oppose us. Mm -hmm. Some people call it spiritual warfare. I just like calling it discerning spiritual fo forces right. which oppose our destiny and our purpose because many of us are held up by the same challenges every day. It's always the same trap, the same challenge that gets us. And before we know it, we're falling back into that same trap. So we got to learn how the enemy is fighting with us and be able to defeat that. So how, 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 how important it is for people to have discernment in this hour? You talk about being a spiritual gladiator. And when I think about gladiators, I'm looking at the stuff that they have on. So it's important that we also are not only just spiritual, but we're protected um, kind of like the armor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, but how important is it for people to have discernment in this, this hour that's going on in our, you know? You, you know, whether it's, you know, and it's interesting you say that. In the last 12 months, probably about the last 14 calendar months, uh, we have traveled, my wife and I, Valora, have traveled probably 30 U.S. cities and probably 10 foreign countries. And I find that it's not just a problem that we have in America that people need discernment. And you know, it's not just an American thing, but it's a global thing that believers need discernment. We need to be able to discern between what's God and what's good because sometimes stuff can look good and it can look as if though it's going to work and it can look really really you know you can fool a lot of things but you cannot fool God and when we operate in his in his spirit and we move in the power of discernment it causes us to make right decisions because one wrong decision it's just like for instance if we were you know I love to use analogies so uh, some cities that you're traveling through the exits come very quickly mm -hmm. sometimes it takes you a long time to get back to another exit so you can turn around and come back the other direction mm -hmm. and then get back to your exit. Well, discernment will keep us from having to go long distances mm. to get back to the places That's that good. we need to get to because uh, sometimes we don't have that much time, right. you know? Sometimes you, you've got a deadline and you need, you need to know for sure which direction you need to go because if that direction is not there, you're going to be in trouble. Now, you talk about you have a passion for leaders as well. Mm -hmm. uh, how important it is for leaders today to really uh, preach the raw, un, you know, adulterated gospel because we live in a season where people are watering the gospel down mm. to make it so friendly. Uh, but I think in this hour, we need leaders who are bold enough to stand up and just say what God is saying. Do, do you remember when the disciples were told not to preach anymore in Jesus' mm -hmm. name? And they said, we'd rather obey God than obey man. And then Jesus told them at one time, he says, listen, he said, don't fear him who can kill the body. He said, fear him who can kill the body and cast the soul into hell. And so we've got to be concerned about that. We've got to be those who will stand up and preach with love, of course, with love, but preach the word so that people are free, so that they really have uh, the power and the passion and the presence of God that's operating in every facet of their life. I believe that's important. That's why we also have a focus on leadership. Leadership, but not just in the church, but we also focus on leadership uh, even in the marketplace because I, I think it's, it's important for us to have Christian values <clears throat> and godly values in every facet of society. So I think that in itself is major that we've got to train leaders and prepare leaders for their destiny. And then train lead. Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2, he says, he said, the same things that you've seen and heard of me among many witnesses, I want you to, I want you to give to other faithful men who are able to train others also. Right. So, so with that in mind, it's necessary for us to have four levels basically of, of discipleship that goes on, which means that we create leaders who create leaders. Mm. So I think that's very valuable, very important. And that's the uh, iron sharpen of iron kind of principle. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and so, um, you know, discipleship and leadership is so important that discipleship and leadership is not just to the church arena, but mm -hmm. we need people in the marketplace. Right. Uh, kind of expound on that a little bit more. 
Well, I'm, I'm, I'm writing, I'm just finishing uh, our, our latest book. I got a little writer's block, and so it took me a little longer than anticipated, uh, but a book called The New Normal. But the last chapter of that really deals with, with, uh, with really bridging that gap between the church and the marketplace. Because right. I, I, just my personal opinion is that, that we should, you know, we have the keys to the kingdom, so right. we, should be, we should be stewards of, of all of it. And so, there's, therefore, it's very important for us to impact the marketplace mm -hmm. because if we only stay within our four walls and don't go outside that to really impact and to really advance the kingdom of Jesus Christ, then what we're doing is we're letting just whatever happens happen. Right. And so that means that everywhere I go, I should be leading someone. Because right. the reality is I'm leading somebody whether I realize it or not. Somebody's watching me everywhere I go. And so I make the determination in where I lead them to, whether I lead them closer to God or whether I lead them closer to uh, other things that potentially right. they, they have a, you know, a, an inclination to be drawn towards. So that marketplace could be uh, at your job. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It could be at the grocery store. Oh, yes. It could be at the Little League. Absolutely. Um, it could be a lot of places outside of the church because everybody's not called to necessarily wear the title of preacher, mm -hmm. but we're all called to be ministers. Absolutely. Let me give you a story real quick. There was, a, I was in the airport. I was coming back from Chicago just the other day. And so this is, you know, more along the lines of hearing the whole, you know, the voice of the Holy Spirit. But I was in, I was in the airport and the, I had to go to go charge my phone. So I sat down, this young lady was sitting there and I looked at her and I said, are you okay? Is everything good? Right. And she said, yeah, I'm okay. She said, but I lost my wallet here in Charlotte and it was actually stolen. Okay. And so she says, and I just got, and so I said, well, I'll tell you what. I said, come on, we're going to go get you something to eat. Uh -huh. And so when I went to go get her something to eat, I called my wife so my wife could pray with her. Uh -huh. And uh, we came back. She said, my mom had just prayed that God would send somebody who could, who, could, who could minister to me and who would help me in this process. Now, she was from Canada. She was on her way to Lafayette, uh, uh, Louisiana. And so it, right. it was just amazing. But, but when we look at this issue of that, I'm saying that to say that my gift was able to be operating in the air. Airport. It wasn't just in the church. My gift was operating in the airport. And so when we're, when we're out, what you're saying is that when we're out, we shouldn't let our discipleship guard down mm -mm. because every opportunity is presented to us uh, to disciple people. It could be the girl who's serving you your, your coffee and your Absolutely. tea. Absolutely. You know, it could be um, the person who's putting a tire on your car at the mechanic shop is that we should always be ready to be able to minister to somebody. Oh yeah, one of the uh, one of the uh, well, not just one, but several of the people that are in our ministry there in Tampa. Uh, it's very interesting. One in particular, she was our waitress. Every time we went into this restaurant, uh, she would be our waitress, and she served us phenomenally. And so every time we went, so it took two years before she actually even came to visit the church. But now she's in our school for discipleship, and she is growing and learning. Before that, she'll tell the testimony that she had gone through challenges and storms and dysfunction. And all kinds of other things in life, but now she's she's being built and she's be, becoming strong. And uh, just like Peter, she's not cutting anybody's head off anymore. She is excited about the things of God. So, what do you think God is saying in this season right now? You know, I, I really personally believe that it's a season where we really have to draw back closer to him yes. that it's it can't be about the the uh the sensational ministry right. it can't be about uh just the numbers it's got to be about discipling uh that one and building a mega people uh and, and mm. just my personal opinion is that that potentially the season of the mega church and wanting to build a mega church it may not be in this season, but but god is causing the microorganisms the the smaller strategic like special forces type units to really right. emerge and really Really begin to do some some amazing things and so I really see God uh, really equipping believers and really helping people to discover the gifts that are inside of them so that we can really make a greater impact in the earth uh, because the reality is is that people are leaving the traditional church people are not coming to our four walls they're they're, they're, they're not coming and pastors are trying to figure out how do we how do we keep people in the church how do we draw new people to the church because mm. because you know people are leaving and people are just not coming and it's not that they've left God right. but they've left a traditional church mm. your church in Tampa 
Talk about that. Well, you know, I love our church. Our church started about seven years ago. Uh, really phenomenal church. My wife and I, we started it in our living room. Now, initially, we had no intentions whatsoever. We knew we were called to do it. We'd both been in ministry for years, but we just kind of ran from this thing. And, and we were like, God, you know, we could just keep doing whatever we're doing in the marketplace. We could do that. But God kind of just arrested us and said, nope, you're going to do what I'm calling you to do. Very interesting. Uh, I met my wife, and we had only known each other about two months and then we got married and the next month we started the church mm -hmm. and so uh, from that our church is a church that really really focuses on fellowship and love and relationship and that's really built around that um, most people that say when they come in uh, they say that when you know when they come they really feel the you know the love of God they really feel the peace of God the presence of God they feel the fellowship so that's very important for us and your your wife is Valora, yes, absolutely. Who's also a dynamic speaker. Oh, she uh, is as well. Yes, sir. And so you guys get a chance to really travel a lot together to absolutely. The ministry. Yes, sir. That's very, yes, sir. Very, very powerful. Well, you know, we've got about a couple of minutes left, and uh, I want you to kind of um, speak to the people and also pray for them. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they're pastors, maybe they're just regular uh, members of the church um, uh, in, in the area of discipleship and leadership. What would you say to them right now, and then end with a prayer? You know, I, I would say to you that are watching that, number one, there is a gift of God that is within you that needs to be discovered. And I believe that once it's discovered and it's developed and you deploy that, that your gift is going to make room for you. I believe that there was that God does not create anybody without a, 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 a divine purpose and, and a divine destiny that is distinct from anybody else's. So there is something inside of you. There is a purpose inside of you. There is something that you have that that literally nobody else has and so I believe that God is going to do that and then what he's going to do is he's going to take that distinct gift and he's going to make that gift be the thing that causes you to be the leader that you were always created to be you're going to lead people because once you've identified what you're called to do people are going to naturally follow your gift is going to cause people it's going to it's almost going to be a force that's going to cause people to want to follow you and it's going to attract people and it's also not just going to attract people but it's going to attract everything that you need to fulfill the destiny that's upon your life. Why don't you pray for those who are out there right now? Amen. Father, we thank you for those who are watching. And Father, our prayer is, is that they begin to know who they are and who you've called them to be like never before. I believe, God, that this is their season, God, for great purpose, their season, God, for them to be able to do what you have called them to do like never before. And so, Father, I pray for blessings and favor and increase. I pray that everything their hands touch, it prospers. And everywhere their feet treads, they possess the land for you. And we declare it and we decree it. And we believe when we we pray that we receive what we pray for in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, you know, we certainly have had an awesome uh, discussion on discipleship and leadership, and you've brought a, a very vast amount of information and wealth of knowledge to our audience here at TBN. And we uh, bless you and your wife and your ministry there in Thank Tampa. You. And of course, if you're out there and you uh, continue to support the ministry here at TBN so that we can keep the gospel going around the world, until next time, keep on praising the Lord. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.